So we're studying the universe. So if we're studying the universe, we're inside of this classroom, we're going to treat like the magic school bus. So now we're going to go study the universe. The first location that we want to go study, my personal favorite, would be the zoo. So let's take a trip to the zoo. So think of the magic school bus. Let's hop aboard a classroom and then we're going to go visit the zoo. Why are we going to the zoo? Because we want to go study motion. So what do we expect to see at the zoo? At the zoo, we're going to go and try to observe a cheetah. Now, as physicists, we have to follow a couple of rules whenever we make observations. So I'm going to just introduce you to the very basic ones. When you want to observe a cheetah, you want to follow a couple of rules. Let's call this rule number one. So what should be the first rule? Well, do not disturb the cheetah, right? Because if you disturb the cheetah, you're probably going to be gone. So do not disturb the cheetah. Uh, this sounds silly, but if you think about it, if you're making an observation in the real world, you want to minimize your influence. So if you're throwing stones at a cheetah, it's no longer acting on its natural behavior. So we want to try to make things as more natural as we can. So if we make observations, let's, for now, do not disturb the cheetah. So don't throw rocks at it, don't throw water bottles, just leave it alone. So another case, you want to hide maybe behind the bush while you're observing the cheetah, right? Because you don't want it to spudge. But there are more rules because we live in the digital age and we get excited. So what's the second thing that we're going to do when we see a cheetah? We're going to take out our phones. Uh, normally you want to take the phone and not allow it to be taken out of the classroom. But in this case, when we're doing science, we take out the phone. So let's assume that this is our phone. Now with the phone, yeah, sure, you can take a selfie. Not that exciting, really, because... Cheetahs are way more exciting. So instead, what we're going to do, we want to record the motion of the cheetah. So let's try to record the motion. But as a young director, there's a couple of rules that you need to follow while you're recording. So you may have heard of the movie, or you could quickly Google search for it. There's a movie called Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Now, this movie, it was reported that a lot of people were getting sick, they were throwing up, so it wasn't the best made movie. Now, why would I say that? Well, suppose my cheetah's out there somewhere, and this is my phone again. So, how they're recording the movie is they're moving their phone along as they're following the cheetah, or in this case, the actors. So it turns out that if you record like that, you get to go a bit of a headache or if you start to feel sick. So one of the rules of recording, you want to keep your camera stationary. So you want to hold it still, like on a tripod. Hold still. But of course, now we see that there's clever tricks that you can do. They can make the camera appear to be stationary because we know everything is moving. But if you're moving at a constant pace, then the camera doesn't know that it's moving. It can't tell that it's moving. Only if you're changing its directions, which we're going to see later on that's acceleration. So for now, we can trick the camera into thinking that it's not moving by moving at a constant pace. So. What's the second way we can record motion? Move at a constant pace with the camera. So pretty easy rules to observe the cheetah at the zoo. Don't disturb it, so you don't want to influence the system. You want to be an observer. Well, you want to record the motion. Again, think of clover feel, so hold the camera still. Or if you do need to move, you could get like a rolling cart that goes to a steady pace. So those are the things we gotta make sure that we keep in order to study the cheetah.